best in Spain television. Ours it is. Good evening and welcome to Spring Global on Western Spring Television. Now the headlines. Osho Central Senatorial candidates list out their plans for the district in Western Spring debate. Gunman kills three people at Michigan State University before killing himself. Indian tax authorities raid BBC offices in the wake of Modi's documentary. My name is Okmaya Muni. Every Osho State citizens have been admonished to treat with relevance the legislative election as much as they do to the presidential election. Olayin Kale was on the street of Oshubo to know if the, pre if the president know who they are voting for, aside their presidential candidates. Region Nigeria tends to get skewed towards the presidency, expectedly because of the tremendous influence and powers that the office comes with. The 2023 election is another milestone election because the absence of any former heads of state or incumbent president means there will definitely be a new addition to the list of Nigeria's leaders. But focusing on the presidential election alone would be mistakenly disregarding the other important elections that are taking place and in some cases much more impactful to Nigerians at certain levels. That is why it is important for citizens to avoid fixating strictly on the presidential elections and also make sure they are informed about the other elections like the State House of Assembly and the National Assembly. Sadly, quite a number of Nigerians don't even know who their candidates are for this election, aside the three presidential candidates. St. Morgan and Adetoru Adesoji said, they do not know who their candidate for other elections are, simply because the presidential candidates have overshadowed others. The case is, however, different for Sherifat Asimu, who spoke confidently in a native language, Yoruba, and insisted that citizens know who their candidate is. And people that didn't know their real candidate for House of Rep or House of Senate, his presidency has overshadowed every, 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 all the candidates again. If they have money, as well contest to. I just, I just tell Nigeria to just try and focus and do the right thing for the right people. How do we know? Like, my, like myself, I don't even know anybody. I don't know. I don't know anybody. I only know the presidential candidate. I don't know about any other candidates. On the other hand, Sharif Olalikons urged Nigerians to take other elections as important as the presidential election. Because for Nigeria to be great, other arms of government election needs to be treated with relevance. We need to take it uh, as important because they need to work in hand in hand. But the presidential is the head because it's the one that will control the affairs of the nation. Whether it is controlled in a normal way, the citizen will also benefit from it or otherwise. Anthony Adejumo, who is the team lead of Urban Alert, an ocean-based non-governmental organization, believes that more attention needs to be focused on legislative elections. According to him, the legislature is just as important as the executive, which is why it must be peopled with politicians of repute. Well, uh, it's so unfortunate that um, uh, citizens are not focusing on uh, the legislators. And um, uh, for me, I feel it's a deliberate attempt to uh, give too much power to the executive. You know, uh, citizens in Nigeria have actually uh, seen the legislators as um, not being important when it comes to democracy in Nigeria, and it's so unfortunate. Meanwhile, the general election comes up on the 25th of February, 2023. It appears to certainly that quite a number of Nigerians did not know who their candidate for the State House of Assembly or National Assembly here, as the focus has been solely on the presidential election. Voters should, however, be aware that for Nigeria's democratic system to be further strengthened, it needs a responsive and responsible legislative arm which is populated by credible, sound and selfless lawmakers. Olayinka, Ali, Western Spring.
In Africa, Equatorial Guinea has confirmed its first outbreak of the Marburg virus, following the deaths of at least nine people to the highly infectious and deadly disease similar to Ebola. The World Health Organization, WHO, uh, disclosed by Regional Director for Africa, Dr. Mashadizo Moesi, Mweti in the statement said a Central African country quarantined more than 200 people and restricted movement last week in its care in 10 province after detecting an unknown hemorrhagic fever. He noted that thanks to the rapid and decisive action by the Equatorial Guinean authorities in confirming the disease, emergency response can get to full steam quickly. It is close that in addition to nine deaths, Equatorial Guinea has reported 16 suspected cases of Marburg virus with symptoms including fever fatigue, and blood-stained vomit and diarrhea. According to the World Health Organization, Marburg virus disease can have a death rate of up to 88 percent, while there are no vaccines or antiviral treatments approved to treat it. Tunisian police have arrested two more prominent opponents of President Kai Saeed and the head of a radio station that has broadcast criticism of the president. The detention yesterday comes amid a wave of arrests targeting politicians and other critics of the government. According to a lawyer of a senior official in the biggest opposition party, another, another Nuruddin Bidi, Samri Dilu, police raided the home of a prominent critic of Said and took him away. It is close that the police stormed Nuruddin Bidi's house, assaulted his wife, and arrested him. Another, in a statement, condemned the arrest, saying that the expansion of the authority in harassing opposition figures, journalists, businessmen, and trade unionists is evidence of confusion and inability to face current crises. To the Russia-Ukraine war, NATO Chief Jens Stoltenberg says it is important Sweden and Finland join the organization as soon as possible, but ratifying them at the same time was not the main question. Finland and Sweden must gain approval from all 30 members before joining the military alliance formally. Mr. Stoltenberg's comments come days after Turkey suggested it could greenlight Finland's bid to join without accepting Sweden into the alliance after far-right airliners bought a copy of the Quran outside the Turkish embassy in Stockholm last month. When quizzed about the requ request of President Vladimir Zelensky for F-16 fighter jet, he said the supply of military aircraft to Ukraine is not an urgent issue, but such a discussion is on the way. The urgent need now is to deliver uh, what has already been promised, uh, to uh, deliver the, uh, the armoured vehicles, the, the infantry fighting vehicles, the, the, the German martyrs, the, uh, the, the, the US uh, uh, Bradleys, and of course also uh, the main battle tanks, the Leopards, and the other battle tanks that have been uh, 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 pledged. Uh, and, and, and we see that allies are stepping up. We need the training, we need the equipment, we need the, the ammunition, and that's exactly what allies uh, are now providing and will be a top uh, issue. In, uh, at the meetings uh, at NATO. Uh, so uh, the issue of aircraft is not uh, the most urgent issue now, uh, but it is an ongoing discussion. Uh, and as I've said before, uh, we have uh, ongoing consultations among allies on the type of systems allies uh, should deliver to uh, Ukraine. A court in South Korea has granted two Russian men who have been stranded at the country's ancient international airport for months the right to apply for refugee status and leave the terminal building. The Incheon District Court this morning also rejected one other Russian national's plea for asylum without detailing the reasons for the decision. The three had landed at the airport in October after fleeing Russia to avoid being drafted to fight in Ukraine. South Korea's Justice Ministry rejected the applications for refugee status, saying that avoiding military service did not qualify as a valid reason for receiving asylum in South Korea. However, a lawyer representing the three, Lee John Chan, said the court's decision on the two was welcomed, but it is regrettable that the court rejected the other one's plea. The head of Syrian opposition run rescue group has denounced the United Nations decision to seek authorization from Syrian President Bashar al-Assad for the delivery of aid of earthquake stricken northwestern Syria through additional border crossings, which Turkey, head of the White Elmed Raid al-Saleh, told newsmen that the decision was shocking and the group was at loss at how the UN is behaving, adding that it if that it allows Mr. Al-Assad score a political gain. 
The comment comes after UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres yesterday said Mr. Al Assad had agreed to allow UN aid deliveries to opposition held territories through two more crossings on the border with Turkey for an initial period of three months. The agreement to open the Bab al Salam and Bab al Rahe crossings to UN aid followed a meeting in Damascus between al Assad and UN humanitarian chief Martin Griffiths, who spent the weekend visiting affected areas in southern Turkey and northwestern Syria. In the United States, a gunman has fatally shot three people at Michigan State University and wounded five others before killing himself. According to the interim deputy chief of the campus police department, Chris Rosman, the attacker opened fire yesterday night at an academic building, at an academic building named Becky O. Rosman said two of the victims were killed in Becky O and a third was killed in the student union building. Police said that the gunman fatally shot himself off campus later. The wounded were all listed in critical condition early this morning. His motive behind the attack was not immediately clear, although Rosman said the 43-year-old man had no known affiliation with the university. We understand. I can only imagine the emotion that's involved right now. It's going to help us, and it's going to help our response, and it's going to help us identify the shooter, the less people that are on campus at this point. Please do not come to campus. We are doing everything we can to ensure the safety of our campus and all of our students. We currently have hundreds of police officers and law enforcement officials, state, local, and federal, on campus working in a coordinated effort to ensure the safety of campus and identify and apprehend the suspect. All campus activities will be canceled for the next 48 hours, including sporting events, classes, and all campus-related activities. Meanwhile, United States President Joe Biden has fired the architect of the Capitol, a figure responsible for the upkeep and operation of the buildings at the House, Congress, and other key government offices. Brett Blanton, a civil engineer appointed to the role on the former President Donald Trump, faced accusations of administrative, ethical, and policy violations, as well as bipartisan condemnation for his actions during the Capitol attack on January 6, 2021. His termination yesterday came shortly after the chair of the Administration Committee in the House of Representatives and Wisconsin Republican Brian Stay issued a call for Blanton to immediately resign. The top Republican in the House, Speaker Kevin McCarthy, likewise said that either Blanton should leave office or President Biden should remove him immediately. Mr. McCarthy noted that the architect of the Capitol, Brett Blanton, no longer has his confidence to continue the job. You're watching Spring Global on Western Spring Television. We'll be right back after this break. The 1914 Amalgamation Treaty is synonymous to the birth of Nigeria. Frederick Lugard, a British Army captain and an outlaw who struck gold in Africa, became the instrument used by destiny to make it happen. The Amalgamation of Nigeria was designed for economic reasons by the Colonial Administration to offset Northern Protectorate budget deficit by Southern Protectorate surplus returns. The Amalgamation had ad initio created imbalance in the economic, political, structure of Nigeria and was responsible for the persistent hiccups and the efforts to forge a united country till today. Nigeria's amalgamation was labeled as the mistake of 1914 by native northern conservatives who neither wanted it nor contributed anything significant to its sustenance. Western Springer Television identifies with Amalgamation Treaty of 1914 as a watershed event in history.
Yo, welcome back on Spring Global on Western Spring Television. The candidates contesting for the Oshun Central Senatorial District all are different political parties. Today, were invited for the maiden edition of a parliamentary debate series of Western Spring Television at our sister station, Rave 91.7 FM, or Lion Kali, files in a detailed report of a debate. It was all fireworks in Oshubo, the Ocean State Capitol, today, as three candidates for Ocean Central Senator seats presented their plans and programs to the public on the meeting edition of the parliamentary debate series of Western Spring Television and Rave 91.7 FM. Present were candidates of the New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, Mr. Kola Bamibola, Senator Ajibola Bashiru of the APC, and Mr. Oyibodi Babalola of the Labour Party. Meanwhile, the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Mr. Ulubiyi Fadiyi Ajagunla, was conspicuously absent, although he was invited. Candidate representing the New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP for the Ocean Central Senator Districts, Kola Bamibola, while speaking, reiterated the need for grassroots engagement with the masses as part of the dividends of democracy. Planet us. Now, in NNPP, our watchword is uh, we have, we need new Nigeria. Like I first said in my introduction, the new Nigeria I'm talking about is what the old orders have cost this nation. We need to change it. We can't continue like this. For example, it, 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 it's supposed not to be a thing of uh, good. If people elected you into power and they now see you on four, four years routine, it's not a good thing. You should be close to people that elect you. In my own uh, ideology and the ideology of our own party, we, we believe that uh, we are close to the masses. And if we are given the opportunity, we are going to voice the voice of the masses out. Mr. Bamibola maintains that the party is united, saying Ocean Central needs a voice that can amplify the needs of the constituents, and he considers himself fit for the task. It needs people-oriented program, not solar light. Not giving people uh, addressing whatever and whatever. If you believe you have empowered people, they can buy those things by, them, by, by themselves. They can buy it. But the development the, the of, of democracy that we are expecting is not all those uh, stipend, people oriented program that can give the youth their future. Whereby their future will be. Benefited. Senator Ajibola Bashiru of the All Progressive Congress APC, who is seeking re election, read out his achievements in the last three years of being in the National Assembly. Senator Ajibola expressed confidence that the electorate would vote for him once again. As a first timer, I was made chairman of the Senate Committee on Diaspora and Non Government Organization. It was at that time that the South African Nigeria Binational Commission was established uh, with our initiative to ensure that we address the problem of attack of uh, xenophobia in uh, South Africa. Within one year of my being in the Senate, I was appointed spokesperson of the Senate and the representative of the Nigeria Senate in the Association of Senate, Shura and Equivalent Council in Africa and the Middle East. And in terms of facilitating project, you see, it's a question of evaluation. I've told you, if anybody, anybody that uh, wants to uh, uh, negative solar light should go to a job and say that the solar light should be removed, you will see the kind of reaction you get from the market women. Aside, aside solar light, I've completed 12 schools in Oslo Central Central District within three and a half years. In Oshobo alone, four schools, Muslim Grammar School, Akon Baptist, I mean Primary School, uh, Laro Grammar School, and AUD Primary School. Also in a, in, 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 a, in, a, in a record of local government, as I speak now, Ewata Primary School, nine blocks of classroom, have been, nine classrooms have been completed in two blocks in Ewata Primary School. There's also school in Elagwiji, in Enora, in Bumino, in Ibadjo, and across the senatorial district. Senator Bashir expressed confidence that he has done well in the areas of infrastructure, education, and other areas. These are very impactful I and mean, a project on our people. So mm. I, believe, I want to say that uh, at this time in Modest, I've done impactful projects on the people of the center, sure. and I'm supposed to do more. I've been elected as a ranking senator of the federal government. Revealing his political blueprint at the debate was also to the candidate of the Labour Party, Oyibo Babalola, who stated 
that the party is determined to change the political paradigm of Nigeria through its presidential candidate, Peter Obi. So this time, this time around, it's the masses that want to change. And they are determined to have the change. And they are going to vote out there to bring in a new Nigeria entirely under Peter Obi. Mr. Babalola, who however commended the incumbent senator representing Ocean Central, Ajibola Bashiru, for his achievements so far, says he hopes to achieve more by ensuring accountability and bridging the gap between constituents and representatives. What I'll do better is one, I'll get myself more endeared to those who are sending me to Abuja. I'll get closer to them, representing them very well. Feedbacks. Before I go, we have to debate, talk with them, so I know what they have and what they want. When I get there, I'll come back, link up with them, let them know what we are doing up there. So that, even, when, even if I'm not there, they'll be speaking in defense of what I did. They said that gap between the elected and those that elected him. The legislative election comes up on February 25th, same day as the presidential. Ola Inka, Ali, Western Spring Television News. Indian tax authorities have raided the offices of the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, in the country in the wake of a documentary that examined Prime Minister Narendra Modi's role in 2002 anti Muslim riots. According to the BBC in a tweet, the BBC News Department's press office this morning said the tax authorities were currently at the BBC offices in New Delhi and Mumbai. It was gathered that those in the offices of the time, at the time of the raid were not allowed to leave and employees scheduled for night shifts were told not to come in pending further advice. However, the Indian government did not immediately release any details on the search. The raids come weeks after Modi's government banned a BBC documentary titled India, the Modi question, which probes his role in the anti-Muslim riots in 2002 in the state of Gujarat, where he was chief minister at the time. And out of sport, the Champions League is back with the 2020 finalist Bayern Munich and Paris Saint-Germain locking on in the state to Princes for the first leg of a competition uh, round of 16. World Cup winner and PSG Luna Messi is set to return for the Parisians after missing the defeat at Monaco with an armstring injury. Kylian Mbappe has also missed the last three games and though returned to training at the weekend after recovering from a thigh injury. Today's game may come too soon. Jan Sommer will continue between the sticks for Bayern amid the long-term absence of Mario Noya, who was injured skin before the new year. Joshua Kimmich set out Saturday's easy win over Bochum through suspension, who will now return while Thomas Muller, forced off at halftime in that game, should be fit as well. Before we end Spring Global, here's a recap of our top stories. The candidates contesting for the Ocean Central Senatorial District on the different political parties today were invited for the maiden edition of a parliamentary debate series of Western Spring Television at a sister station, Reeve 91.7 FM. A gunman has fatally shot three people at Michigan State University and wounded five others before killing himself. Indian tax authorities are raided the offices of the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, in the country in the wake of a documentary that examined Prime Minister Narendra Modi's role in 2002 anti-Muslim riots. According to the BBC, you can follow us on our social media handles on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Western Spring Television. You can also watch us live on our YouTube channel at Western Spring Television. I am Okwaya Muni. Thanks for watching.